Richland, and I'm about to make my least favorite video. This Raising Monarchs episode is about how to euthanize a monarch butterfly. My attempt is to show you the most humane way accepted by entomologists to kill an insect. As a guy who loves the monarch butterfly, of course, this is my least favorite video to ever make. And I want to be clear that in the making of this video, absolutely no insect is ever harmed, and you will not see any insect harmed in this video. So if I don't really like making this, why am I making it? In other words, when is it necessary to euthanize a monarch butterfly, and why would somebody who's raising them ever feel the need to do this? Well, recently we've had some episodes that have shown what are some of the problems that you might have if an adult emerges and there's issues with it. For example, you may have monarchs that emerge from their chrysalis, all seemed fine, but they come out with deformed wings and they are unable to fly. In other cases, you might have a monarch that, while its wings were drying, something happened. It fell and the wings were not able to fill with fluid the correct way and dry properly. They might have some type of crumpled wing, in which case it also cannot fly. The video that discusses adult monarchs that are unable to fly and what the options are is down in the description below. And in that video, I discuss three different options. The third option is this one, euthanizing the monarch butterfly. And so, I wanted to make sure to have a video out there that shows you the proper procedure, involving an envelope and freezer method. This is also the method that's recommended by monarchwatch.org. And as I said before, it's also considered by the majority of entomologists as being the most humane way to kill an insect. It's a pretty simple, not very complicated procedure, but still, I felt it's probably easier and maybe you're more comfortable with it if you've seen how it's done. In addition to not being able to fly because of damaged or deformed wings, there's also concerns sometimes of OE infections. OE is a parasite that affects the monarch butterfly, and also the queen butterfly. I've made a few videos on OE that go into the details of what it is, how it works, and how it affects the monarch butterfly. Those are also down in the description if you want to review those and learn more about it. And in one of the videos, Should We Euthanize, I also explored what the different experts that I could get a hold of were having to say about the choice of whether or not and when to euthanize a monarch butterfly if it's infested with OE parasites. Those who were consulted in that video and helped me out were Dr. Sonia Altizer, Dr. Mark D. Hunter, and Dr. Chip Taylor. All three had recommendations that were somewhat similar and in some cases a little bit different in the details as to when euthanization should occur. One thing about all three of them is that they do have certain situations where they do recommend that euthanization happen. If you do want to check out though what they had to say on their choice as to when to do it, I do urge you to review that video. And something I want to make clear in this very unenjoyable how-to video is that when it comes to the choice of euthanizing I'm not advocating one way or the other as to when you should or shouldn't. What I feel you should do is if you're in a situation where euthanization is an option, you need to make your own informed decision. There's a lot of different opinions out there. I would say consult multiple sources, see what multiple different experts are saying, and come to a decision that you are comfortable with. I am never somebody who's telling you what to do. Whether we're talking about monarchs that have damaged or deformed wings, or if we're talking about monarch butterflies that from egg to adult you've raised and they wind up having OE infections, the only choice that I'm ever advocating you take is an informed one that you are comfortable with. But should you choose that you're in a situation where you think euthanizing is the most humane choice, I wanted to be sure to equip you with the knowledge so that way you're able to do it. All right, so let's get into it. And please keep in mind the whole time that the butterfly that's used as a demonstration in this video, that butterfly was never harmed and is in fact shown to be released at the end of this video. Here we go. Make sure that you have your envelope set out and ready to go and then you need to grasp your butterfly. The most gentle way to grasp your butterfly without causing any damage to it, whether it be for handling them for OE testing or even just release, is to grasp them right where the wings connect to the thorax. So with my two fingers here, I'm just going to place them right here. And now the wings cannot be flexed, and so this prevents any harm to the butterfly. So this is just the preferred method of grasping a monarch or really any other butterfly as well. Okay.
Now once you have your monarch in hand, you want to already have the envelope waiting, open, ready to go. I'm going to open the envelope and gently I place the butterfly inside. And I let the envelope just close on its own. And you can see also in the envelope the reason why we do this is that the butterfly is not flapping its wings. And when closed, it actually it's not seeing anything. It's not flapping its wings, it's not struggling. This is in fact one way that sometimes entomologists who find butterflies out in the wild and bring them back for study will collect a live specimen so that way it can remain alive. As long as you are careful not to be putting pressure on the envelope, the butterfly is relatively safe and not likely to injure itself. Now if you're euthanizing, then that means that this envelope would go into the freezer. And that envelope then should remain in the freezer. Some recommend three to four hours, but I don't say that because everyone's freezer is different. Depending upon how much food or what you're storing in there could take longer for the heat to get pumped out. So for me, I would recommend 24 hours. And what happens to the butterfly in the freezer is that the insect goes into essentially a diapause state, which is like going into hibernation. As it gets cooler, it begins to slow down the chemistry. Eventually then, the butterfly is asleep before it ever freezes solid. So it is considered the most humane way to euthanize an insect in general, not just monarch butterflies. But of course we're not doing that to this one. We'll give him some nectar and let this guy go. You can see from being in the envelope there was not a struggle. Antenna, legs are all intact. If you have an insect, if you have a butterfly that has crumpled wings and that is the reason you're euthanizing, then a, uh, a storage food container works just as well. Maybe you don't necessarily need the envelope. Some might still consider the envelope. I mean, if you're placing the crumpled wings into the envelope, understand that there's no pain receptors in the butterfly wings. As far as if they're crumpled, it's not in pain. If they get a little bit more damaged in placing in the envelope, that also is not causing the monarch to be in pain. And so that is the procedure. No need to seal the envelope, and I wouldn't seal the envelope because it could be that the deceased butterfly can still serve a purpose as potentially an educational tool. Or if maybe you have a butterfly where one set of wings is still healthy and the other set was damaged, well, this might give you some spare wings which could potentially be used in a butterfly wing transplant or repair. I have not attempted such a procedure yet, but I know that if I ever want the chance to try, I will need a set of wings in order to do it, or at least half a set of wings. So the situation has not arisen, and hopefully it does not, but if I have a butterfly that has damaged wings, but one half of them is still good, that might be a chance to then use those wings and thus that butterfly for a purpose of helping out another. So I am considering that option and maybe trying that in the future. All right, buddy. Thanks for your help. All right. I don't know how long he's going to stay here, but there you go. Oh. And he's gone. <laughs> well, I think you understand it's not a fun video to make, but thanks for checking it out. And I just want to reiterate one more time. When it comes to the decision of whether or not to euthanize a monarch butterfly, you're already not having a fun time with that choice. But every expert that I've encountered does have certain situations where they feel it is necessary. And it might be a little bit different from one expert to the next. There isn't one specific recommendation that I am advocating other than you should make an informed decision on your own. Consult multiple different sources, see what they have to say, take it under consideration, and decide what is best for you, what you are comfortable with. I'm Rich Lund. 
Thank you very much for being interested and putting forth effort to try and help the monarch butterfly population. Trust me, they appreciate it. I know I do. See you next time.